Welcome back. I'm Melissa. Thank you for joining me here. And if you're new here, welcome. I figured I would film today. I have a few projects that I want to get done. And I also want to do a couple like random repottings. So I figured I might as well just film and take you along on the process with me. I have my Marble Queen leaf. This is the one that I broke. It is 13 inches long. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I'm getting ready to turn this into artwork and I did the same thing with my, you can't see it right there, my Monstera Albo. My first leaf that had like given all of its energy to produce this beautiful plant, I saved the original leaf and I want to save this one. And I have some supplies. I went to um, Hobby Lobby and I got a few supplies. And so I'm going to make a reel on my Instagram about this, but I figured I would just take you through kind of a more in-depth process if you're interested. And then I'm going to be spray painting my pots that I got from Walmart. I got some blue pots, but I love the pot shape, but I don't like the color. And they fit a six inch perfectly. And they were only like $6 and some change for the pots. So I got some spray paint. I'm going to spray paint them. And I also have a couple, like I said, a couple plant repots to do. I'm gonna try and do those today, <laughs> we'll see. But yeah, I just, I can't wait to do this, so I'm excited. So we're gonna work on this first because we're going to be um, kind of putting some stuff on here to preserve it. And I wanna let it dry because I'm gonna have to paint the back side. So I'm gonna get started on this first, and then we'll probably do the spray paint and then some repotting last. So that is the plan for today's video. And yeah, I'm excited. So let's get started on painting this guy. Okay, I have my supplies out here that I want to show you. So these are the pots that I got from Walmart. And I put like a six inch pot in here and it fits so well. And let me show you the design because it's so stinking cute. Oh, I just think that's so pretty, like that whole style and shape so i got three of them and this is the spray paint i uh, just got this off amazon i haven't used this before it's called coarse texture and it's like a white color i guess that's what it's gonna look like i feel like that on that pot is going to be so pretty so i'm really excited to do that so this is the monster elbow that I did a while ago. This has been over a year now and the leaf has held up really well. It's brown like this because that's how it stayed on the plant as long as possible and it browned up. And so I didn't want to take it off or cut it off early. And although I love this and I hate to like take this out of this frame, I do want to stain it so that I can kind of preserve it better. But the reason why I want to take it out is because I got this over here. My idea for getting this one, this is technically called a shadow box and it's pretty thick. It's like, I don't know, a couple inches maybe. And it opens, I believe from the back and you just put your stuff in here and you use these little pins to pin it to, this is like a, I guess a cloth type material. And this is a 16 by 20, so it's pretty big. And then I could do my Monstera leaf and then the Marble Queen. And then I can just keep adding into this like any other plant leaves that I want to save that are possibly sentimental. And this would look so cute. This actually fits the wall that that one was hanging on, which I didn't realize that because I was thinking about hanging it somewhere else, but I'll just hang it in the same spot as that one. I just have to get different, like drill different screws in the wall, which is totally fine. But I just think this little shadow box is going to be amazing to hold all of my leaves on like inside. And this again, I got this at Hobby Lobby. I just went in store and got it. And then while I was there, let's see, this is what I'm going to use to um, stain or to preserve it. I'm just going to use Mod Podge. I got the matte version. I'm just going to paint it on using these little, um, what are these? Foam brushes. I also got some extra, oh, some extra pens here. 
uh, has a little pearl on the end because I saw the pins in here and I'm like, well, I'm probably going to need more to secure them. So I got those. And then I also got a paintbrush. Um, this one here, it's really, really soft. And the reason I got this is because I want to take an anthurium leaf and do a skeleton. I've been meaning to do it and I just haven't done it yet. I'm probably not gonna do that um, for a little while yet because I wanna, I'd rather do this project first. Someone had told me about doing a skeleton leaf like prior and I just, I guess I just forgot about it, but I really wanna try it and I know you need like a soft paintbrush to get all the like decomposing leaf material off. So that is my fun little project. And yeah, the plant repottings, let me show you. So I'm gonna head back to my plant room here. Dun, 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 dun. It is very humid in here today. Oh my goodness, it is. Oh, it just was 72% humidity and 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So the humidity's come down a tiny bit. So these here are all like projects. Well, my Maharani isn't a project. I just, it has some spider mites and it has, I noticed some like fungal issues popping up here. So I sprayed it um, with my, I just sprayed it with Castile soap and I'm just kind of letting it isolate up here even though it's touching this one. <laughs> these are two kind of sad anthuriums, my Forgetii and my Clary that I desperately need to repot and take care of. My husband's uh, off work right now, so he's doing some outside like stuff. He wants to power wash the house because we have a lot of like mildew and stuff forming on the house. So he's gonna, if you hear like any noises, then that's what it is. And I'm gonna be going outside to spray paint those pots too. So <laughs> I'll take you out there when I go to do that. And if you see me like with my phone, in this video, I am, you know, trying to film a separate video to post these on my Instagram, so. But it's a little after two. I um, uploaded my video this morning and responded to comments. I took like an hour and a half to respond to. I did my Instagram post and it takes me a while to respond to messages. I give myself like an hour-ish, hour and a half or so to respond to like comments, messages, and to upload to like my other socials. And after that, I have to like, like get away from the computer for a bit if I'm not editing, cause I literally, so I do it when I wake up. So I'm still like in my PJs. And usually by the time I like finish that and get dressed, it's like 11 o'clock. And then I start filming for the day. So I do spend, a majority of my morning like at the computer so <laughs> I'm trying to be better about like having some time to myself and not like being on my phone right when I wake up because I like immediately jump on my computer when I wake up and I'm like ah, I gotta stop doing that so maybe I will switch it to the afternoon but then I like want to do my post in the morning because I post every day on my Instagram so I'm like on there and then it gets like before I know it, an hour passes and I'm like oh my gosh I need to get ready <laughs> but yeah I haven't um I haven't ate like a snack or a lunch so I think I'm gonna eat a snack real quick and then we'll get started I'm trying to be better about eating, um, like I'm trying to, I've been like off the workout kick. I'm trying to be active because I feel like I'm at the computer a lot, so I'm not active like I used to be. So I'm really trying to like be better about getting a workout in every day, whether it's just a walk, a bike ride, or, um, oh, hi or just like anything like that. And I'm trying to be better about eating better foods too. So I'm gonna eat some carrots and hummus. And then I bought, I just went to the grocery store yesterday and I'm gonna make some spinach, make some spinach. <laughs> I'm gonna make a quick little smoothie and blend it up. I'm just gonna do strawberry spinach and I think my avocados aren't ripe yet. So I think I'm just gonna throw a banana in there and that'll be like my snack to hold me over. <laughs> 
Here's my setup. So I took some wax paper and just taped it to the table. And the wax paper is basically to um, paint the Mod Podge on over top. Because when you paint it, you're going to get gunk, you know, below what's underneath of it instead of it like clumping and sticking like once you paint it you can take it and like move it to a different spot that way the residue isn't drying and like clumping around the edges I guess and then once it dries we'll flip it over and do the back side I haven't opened this yet because I just bought this I thought I had a Mod Podge but I guess I didn't So we're just gonna paint this over. And you wanna do like a pretty good layer, like a pretty thick layer, and it'll dry down. I forgot to mention that you want to make sure that the leaf is um, flattened. So I've had this laying under a book for about a week or so at least so that it gets really flat and kind of holds its shape, I guess. It was starting to turn a little bit yellow after about a week or so. So I would definitely do it within like a couple weeks time. And so what I mean by the plastic wrap is that you can lift it up to dry in a different spot so that it doesn't stick. And then once that dries, you will um, paint the back side. All right, we are gonna let that dry down and spray paint. We'll move outside and spray paint our pots and then hopefully by the time we come back in, that will, we'll be able to do the other side. I just realized I probably shouldn't be wearing good clothes while spray painting, especially black. I'm kind of realizing I think I probably should have spray painted them a color first, then add the texture on top, because I feel like it's not really hiding the blue color. The bottle says to do multiple coats, so I did a thin layer and I'm going to let it dry. It says to wait, I think, 15, 20 minutes in between coats and then spray again. I feel like I've used half the bottle already though, so I didn't realize it was gonna be so splotchy. I thought it was gonna go on pretty smooth, I guess. I hope I don't have to go get more. That would stink, <laughs> but we'll see, I guess. So now we're kind of at a standstill. We're just waiting on things to dry. Um, I don't really wanna start repotting. I'd rather get these projects somewhat finished. So I'll probably just go on the computer for a little bit and then come back in like 20 minutes or so and do a second coat. Okay, a little update. I had, I just got back from Ace Hardware cause the spray paint wasn't sticking, the texture, and I don't know why, I just, I just assumed it would go on and stick better, I guess. It's mostly, it's not covering up the pot. So I went out and got some like, I guess this is ivory, ivory bisque from, rust -oleum. I'm gonna try to spray paint the pots with this first and then do the texture spray over it to add a little texture, I guess. I don't know why I didn't think about doing that first. 
And let me give you an update on the leaves. They're taking forever to dry. So I have taken the brush a few times and tried to like clean up the glumpiness. I think I put it on too thick. Um, and I still have to do the back side, so I don't know. It's definitely taking a while. I assumed it would dry a lot quicker. I'm trying to like brush some of it away, but I worried I still put it on too thick. I guess I'm just gonna have to let it dry a while longer. I won't put it on as thick on the back. I just finished spray painting them. I don't know if you can see them out there. My husband is power washing, so they're out there in the grass. So I'm gonna let them out there and dry probably for a couple hours and I'll bring them in. We are gonna start painting the back side. This is what the leaf looks like on the front. It finally dried down. just doesn't look like it's wanting to lay very well. It's definitely odd how it's laying. We are gonna let this dry again. So I don't know if you can see, it's kind of like lifting up on the backside. It's like not blending right, so. But that one was fine on the back, but maybe there's just something with the Marble Queen leaf. It didn't do it on the front side. It's much later in the day now, so I wanna bring those pots in. I had to respray them one more time. I had to like flip them over and do the rim on the bottom because it was still a little bit of blue peeking through. So I'm gonna bring those in and set them in here so they can finish drying overnight before I put like a, like before I put them in my plant room. And I'll probably go ahead and do a repot. I think I'll just do one maybe at the kitchen table. Um, we'll see, yeah. I'll probably just do one here. And then probably in this video, cause I feel like this has kind of been going on all day. These projects definitely took a lot longer than I had anticipated. My husband and I are actually going to the beach for a little bit tomorrow because he's off tomorrow um, and we didn't really like do anything together for Memorial Day because he had to work for, for Memorial Day. So we're gonna take a few hours and drive down to the beach. It's only like 45 minutes from here. It's not too far. So um, yeah, I can't do like too much work tomorrow. I, I'm gonna finish editing. Hopefully get another video finished, edited tonight <laughs> so that it'll be ready to go. And I filmed a bunch of like other content day too so felt like it was a productive day and yeah I felt like I got some stuff accomplished here's the pots what do you think I don't know how I feel about them yet I think it looks good they definitely have to finish drying I made a couple mistakes so I wished I would have sprayed them upside down first so that I could have gotten this lip a little bit better because I had to flip them over and get this lip again and while they were flipped over, this top rim got stuck on the cardboard and it kind of peeled some of this off. So I kind of had to respray the top a little. And same thing with the bottom, like it was sticking on the cardboard. So I wish I would have moved it off the cardboard to a different spot to allow it to dry so that it wasn't like so much paint it was like sticking on, if that makes sense, because it was peeling some of the paint off. I didn't really spray the inside all the way. I didn't really care because there would be a nursery pot in there. So this is what I use this one here as like an all over paint and that was the texture. I will say for the cost of the pots, if you have like an easy spray paint that's inexpensive, it'll be worth it. But I feel like I paid quite a bit. I had a coupon at Ace Hardware so I only paid like $3 for this spray paint but this one was kind of expensive. It was like 15 
So between the cost of that and the three pots, so 618 plus 15, I probably spent like under $40 for three pots. So basically they came out to roughly $13 and some change, which kind of makes them somewhat expensive, honestly, but we'll see. I hope it dries down okay and it doesn't like flake off and peel. I hope it sticks okay. Hello. I was just filming for like five minutes talking away and I'm like, shoot, I forgot to turn my mic on. So this is my Clary. I'm gonna quickly um, take care of this very sad anthurium. It's in soles and it might have some rot. I'm just gonna take care of it like I've been doing with all these plants. I might attempt to propagate this one and I'm gonna be cutting some leaves off. I wasn't gonna do this tonight, but this plant desperately needs it. And I'm actually going to be filming another video after this because I went in there and, you know, I've been staring at my inflow that has the berries every day and I went to touch it and it feels softer than it normally does. And it felt like it was, um, I'm worried it's gonna like die off. And so I just carefully plucked a couple, like I picked out a couple of the berries and the little shell came right off. Let me show you. The outer shell, you see those little white dots there? So one shell had two berries and the other one had one or two seeds. So I feel like I'm gonna be staying up and harvesting these anthurium berries tonight. And I want to make that a separate video. So I'm not like prepared to talk about that tonight, but I think I'm just gonna harvest the berries at least, that portion, and then maybe do like my other part of that video a different day, but I at least want to do the harvesting tonight. Just because we are gonna be gone tomorrow, my husband and I, and I don't want like the inflow to die if I wait like another day or if I wait till Friday, I'm worried that it might not make it until then. And I've never harvested berries before and it'll be my first anthurium that I've pollinated. Yeah, I have a feeling this is gonna be another very sad plant in soul soils, go figure. I don't have too many plants left in souls. I, I have like, that was the thing too, like my Clarinervium is in souls and it's, I have, I pollinated one of the inflows on that one and I don't wanna risk repotting it and risk losing the inflow. So I'm gonna wait until I get berries and then immediately repot it after I harvest them. And then I just have my Forgetii to do, my last Anthurium. And it's gonna be the same as this. It looks very sad, it's in souls and I'm just gonna repot it and take care of it. I'll probably just do that one, maybe in a random repot or something. So I don't think I'll make a separate anthurium day. This one may not have like too much rot, but it's just very sad, I don't know. Probably because I've been chronically underwatering these plants now <laughs> that are in the substrate still. I've never propped an anthurium before either, but it's just a hot mess in here. So I'm gonna attempt to. There's a lot of berries, you guys. I'm gonna be plucking the shells off the berries all night. It probably would take me like an hour and then I'm gonna prop them all, probably in moss. I haven't quite decided yet. Oh, I have a lot of roots on this plant. I'm gonna try and not make a mess in the kitchen. <laughs> I didn't wanna make a mess in my plant room. I had just cleaned in there, you know, from my plant chores vlog I did over the weekend and I'm like, I am not making a mess in there. And it is so hot in there too. It's like eight o'clock at night right now and it's still like 76 degrees in there. And I even have the air conditioning running. It's just so hot in that room all the time. Surprisingly, there's not too much rot. I mean, I think it's more so dehydrated more than anything. I've definitely underwatered this plant in the last couple months for sure. I'm probably gonna rinse this root system 
in water and just like kind of hydrate it for a minute and then we will prop this girl. My husband is staying the night at his brother's house. He has two more nights left. He, I guess they they couldn't find a sitter or their sitter canceled or something and they already um, had this plan, this trip, I guess, planned for a while. And so they've been gone for an entire week. And so they have three dogs and he can't like, he has to stay there overnight or someone does. Cause they're like, the youngest dog I think is four now or five, but then the other two are a bit older and one of them has like kidney issues. So it'll, the dog will pee in the house if no one is there to let it out, like in the middle of the night. They don't want like her to do an accident in the house. So he's been staying over there just as a favor. Where was I going with this story? Oh, that's right. So <laughs> I was telling my husband, cause he hasn't been here the last since Monday night, that I heard a voice in the bathroom when I was in there the other night. And it sounded so real. And it's like, I have goosebumps right now, just thinking about it. And I told him, you know, when he got back home, I'm like, I think our house or the bathroom is haunted or something. What if this was built on some kind of, I don't know, maybe something happened on the property or on this land before they built houses on here. Cause Savannah is one of the most haunted cities, I think. So, and my brother or his brother's house, they say that they have uh, stuff that happens in their house too, like randomly, that they think that their house is haunted. Like there's just like random things that happen. Like one time, one of her shoes in her closet was down in perfect position on the floor. And these shoes are like way up on the top shelf and she hasn't worn them in forever, but it was just like neatly laying on the floor when she went in there and she's just like, what the heck? <laughs> and then I saw and our motion um, went off. We have cameras outside of our house and the motion detected something. And when I looked at it, it looked like two little orbs or something flying out there. They just like continually kept flying and flying for, I don't know, a few minutes at least. And that like scared me too. <laughs> My husband said it was probably a spider or a bug. I'm like, they're literally flying in the air. How is that a spider? Yeah, a little ghost story for you guys. I actually might just take her to the shower because I really should probably hose the leaves off. I don't know if this is fungal or if it, I'm, I'm sure the crispiness is probably from dehydration. I might cut some of the smaller leaves off and maybe leave the best looking ones, but we'll see once I go to like, I actually could probably just pull this apart. Actually, let me see if it'll pull apart. I could probably just separate her. I know it's hard to see, but I basically am just pulling. <laughs> it literally just came right off. was like connected down here and I just like pulled it. Okay, that was easier than I thought. <laughs> I didn't know what was happening. And I could probably prop this again, but I'm not going to. I think I'll leave this section and this section. This looks like the main trunk here cause you can see the root system, how fine it is. And this is all the top growth. This was like all aerial roots. So it literally like created a whole new plant. I don't know why I was thinking, I was thinking clary in my head the whole time, but this is my crystallinum. <laughs> but actually my crystallinum did start as like a one leaf or a two leaf, I think. I do have an older picture of it, but again, it, it, it like exploded exponentially. And even my clary has like five leaves, I think now. 
So again, this one started still pretty small and it grew like crazy. Luna took my seat. Switch me seats, my love. <laughs> Do you see her? <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Let's switch. Let's switch. Mew. She has been sleeping all day. <laughs> all right, I have my Clary soak in and my forgetty eye is very sad and I can't stand looking at it anymore. So while that one is soaking, we are gonna take care of this plant so I can have my happy plant back. Let's hope the root system on this one is okay. Cause I am worried about this one. I think just dryness. I think I just underwatered her. The roots are very dry. I'm soaking them in the hydrogen, water and hydrogen peroxide is what I'm doing. All right, so we're gonna let these soak for a little bit and then I will be back with both plants and we're gonna go with a six inch pot like this for them. I just wanna show you what they were looking like here. I have water and hydrogen peroxide in there. They've been soaking a good 30 minutes or so, so I'm just going to rinse these off with water and then I will meet you back at the potting station. Hi, hello, I'm back. <laughs> I have all of my washed anthurium here. It took me about 20 minutes to clean the roots cause they were so dry. There was a lot of dry rot that was happening but I thoroughly rinsed the root system and cleaned these guys like pretty well. So I have the Frigidii and two Crystallinum, which technically my Crystallinum, I could actually prop each piece two more times so that I'd have a total of six plants. I could do that if I wanted to, but I might just leave it two and two. And I don't know why this one's growing like this. I don't know if it's because it was sad or growing away from light or whatever, but when I pot this, I'm gonna stake them up so that they're kind of up like that. But yeah, I don't wanna expo expose the roots to too much air. So let's get these potted up. I try to pluck off as much raw as I could. Some of these pieces have so many little secondary roots. These plants are definitely gonna go through a bit of an, an adjustment period after what they just went through in there. But you know what? They're gonna be so much happier. I'm so glad. I am tackling this. I don't know why I was putting it off for so long. Again, it's like some of those tasks, I feel like just seem so daunting, but once you get started and start doing it, it just makes you feel so much better. Still have a little bit of rot I'm trying to cut away. But there's so many secondary roots here that I'm not really, worry that the plant will stress too much. So when I had my anthurium, when I first got my anthurium, you know, I had it in my cabinet, all of them, and they grew so well in my cabinet. I had every single one in there. They grew tons of new leaves, tons of roots, and they eventually outgrew my cabinet. I think I started taking them out. Mm. This is my moss pole mix, by the way. And these are the new pots I got off Amazon recently. I like that they don't, they have side vent holes, but not a ton of holes here. So a bunch of soil falls out and they have a ton of holes on the bottom. So I'll link these down below if you're interested. I got a 15 pack for they're six inches for $25 or something, so not bad. These pots might be a little too small at first here, but I don't wanna go up too large. I'd rather just kind of get them a little bit happy in here first before I think about going up too big. 
Yeah, and I don't know, between, something happened between like December, November, you know what, I know what happened. Potting him in that stupid soil is what happened. And then me underwatering them, of course, the last two months. I was gonna do pot extenders with this, um, but I don't think I'm gonna tackle that today. I'm gonna let them situate and grow first and then I will do like a little pot extender on top. I will probably end up top dressing these with moss though after I finish repotting them. And so what I'm gonna do is I have a couple steaks here. I am going to pop it right down in there. And we're gonna Velcro the leaf to the steak. And I like these clear ones because you can't really see them. Okay, look how much better it's looking already. I got a water and top dress with moss. But what I wanna do first is, since there's so much crispiness going on, I don't think it's fungal. I think it's, this just to me looks like from underwatering. I'm gonna trim some of the yellow edge off just to clean them up a bit. Just where, I'm just gonna cut right where it's yellow. Um, try not to cut into the healthy tissue. just so that it looks a little bit more nice. Okay, that looks better to me. already so much better. 10 times better. I will water all these at the end and add the moss. So we're just gonna basically gonna repeat the process for these other two. So we had one, so we cut this in half. Well, we pulled it apart, but let me show you. So this is the crystal item. So where did it come apart? So this is where it came apart at. You see that right here where my pinky is? So that was connected down here to this one and I just pulled them apart and it broke like right at the base. You could use a knife to um, like a pair of shears and cut through it. And I so I could probably cut this two more times. So you see where this piece is connected to here, is connected to here. So if I like pull these enough, or I could cut at the base if between these two, I could propagate it again. It's kind of hard to explain, but you could pretty much either cut or pull them to prop. But I don't wanna prop these anymore. I'm not gonna worry about every little piece of rot, but for the most part, I feel like I got it. Okay. 
I'm just using Osmico Plus. I didn't say what I was using. Anthuriums love their like feed. They are definitely hungry plants. I swear last summer, as soon as I added Osmico and I like had them all in my cabinet under really good light and just that environment, they just, they went crazy. All right, I might have to go get some more of these for the next plant. I'm gonna do the same thing just to hold it upright. I might switch this over to the, you know, the clear, it's not fishing line, but it's the plastic. I might switch it over to that eventually so that you don't see this Velcro, but I don't feel like messing with that tonight. So for tonight, I'm just going to leave it like that. So much more cute. It's adorable now. All right, last one. I cannot believe this this uh, crystal was that big in the pot together <laughs> into one. That's crazy. Hi, Nunu. Hi, Nunu. What are you doing? Hi, Nunu. All right, I'm gonna let my camera cool down for a minute. I'm just gonna finish this one up and then just moisten some moss um, and just top them with moss, give them a good water. I'm just gonna add some Super Thrive in my water like I normally do, give them a good water and then I will show you what they look like here. Here is the final look at the plants. I got my mess cleaned up. You can see I watered everyone in top dress with sphagnum moss. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, cutie. They look so much better. Look at them. So you have the two crystals and the forgetty eye. And then I added, you can see kind of more this way, the stakes. And then I'm probably gonna replace the green Velcro with the clear elastic. Um, just so that's not as noticeable. Not that the green Velcro is bad, it's just, I know it'll probably bug me. They honestly, they look 10 times better. I know they're gonna be happy in some time. And I watered in the Super Thrive. I let them drain. Some of them are still draining, so I'll empty that out once they're finished. And I did a very light layer of moss, it's barely anything, just to cover up some of the aerial roots to encourage them to grow down. They, honestly, they look so much better. <laughs> you know what I was thinking? So I have the three pots here, and then I have these three pots. Wouldn't that be a perfect combination? I put them over here to finish drying. Like those three on a plant shelf together with these three in them. Maybe it was meant to be that I did these three tonight and I have three pots for the three pots. So today's Wednesday, so I probably won't get this finished until Friday. So I will um, show you the plants in my plant room with the pots if I end up doing the pots. And I will show you the uh, rest of this. I'm gonna let this finish drying I don't think I'd have to do another coat at all. I think the one would be fine. And that one's done too. I didn't, unfortunately, it just took so long to dry. I didn't get to finish that today. But yeah, that's it for tonight. I will pop back on in a couple more days and we will finish up this little DIY project and I'll show you the plants and that'll be it for this video. Say hi. Bye, Chai. Say bye.
Good morning. It is Friday and I'm going to finish up the video that I was filming the other day. I actually just did another little layer of the Mod Podge stuff over the Marble Queen leaf and I will show you that. And then we're going to take those little pots and put them in our plant room and we will hang the frame and that'll be it for this video. So I'm excited to get that hung up and I'm excited to do more plant leaves now and fill up that shadow box. It's going to be just so fun and fun to look at and do. So I'm excited. I like doing these kinds of projects too, cause it's like, I like doing like the little DIY stuff like that. And yeah, it's creative and just another like outlet for you to like focus on and do something else other than just like, for me, other than just like social media stuff. I haven't been in my plant room yet today. I need to water and stuff in here cause it's Friday cause they're getting dry. Yeah, I can tell it's time for water. And those are the anthurium that we did the other night. So they're doing well so far. I think I'm going to use the pots for these three. They're so cute. I like them. So we're gonna leave those there for now, and then I may end up putting a different plant in them, we'll see. But I love the white, I think they're so cute and classy. I love it. So these are the hooks here. So what I do is I take a piece of painter's tape and put it along the back, and I take a pencil and mark on the painter's tape where I need to put the holes, and then I remove the painter's tape and level the painter's tape on the wall and then drill my holes through the painter's tape and, it, and you don't have to like finagle with trying to make it even and center. So I'm gonna grab my level, some screws, a hammer and the masking tape and we will get to hanging this. I'm excited. All right, that's center. So where we have our holes, we're just going to mark where we're gonna drill. Okay, got that side attached. Okay, finally. <laughs> Yay, it looks cute and it's nice and straight. I, the only thing though is I wish this opened from the front because every time you want to add something in, you're going to have to like redo it from the back. But it looks good there. Are you trying to help me? <laughs> yeah. I think that looks good. Hopefully it's not too big for the wall. All right, it's been drying a little bit and it opens just like any other picture frame. This is like the material. And so I don't like that that brown there. I honestly wish I kind of want to like cover that part up, but as soon as I get more leaves, I will layer them and position them differently. But I think for now, what I'll do is kind of just leave it leave it how it is. And then these little pins that they came with, I'm just going to kind of secure them in a couple spots, just pin them. It's adorable. <laughs> I am already in love. All right, so we will flip this back over like so. Okay. Oh, that's so cute. I actually do want to clean the front of the glass. I didn't clean it yet and there's some fingerprints.
Oh my goodness, that is so cute. And it's gonna be so cute layering that. Oh my gosh. All right, we are going to hang her back up. Oh my goodness. It looks so good, look, I love it. I think the gray frame goes so much better in here too, other than, other than the wood type natural frame I just had for the Monstera leaf. And it's gonna be so nice, like adding different plant leaves in here too. It's like how thick it is. It looks amazing. I'm so happy with it. Yeah, so the only negative, again, I would recommend getting one that opens from the front so you don't have to deal with taking it down every time. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions with this, with the plant pots, or with the anthurium repotting, drop a comment down below. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so excited to just come in here and stare at that now. I just, I love it. <laughs> I'm just so excited for it and it just makes me so happy. I highly recommend doing this, especially for sentimental plant leaves. I know a lot of people are just like, it's just a plant leaf, like what's so special about it? They're special leaves, I don't know. It's just a way to commemorate the leaf and the plant, I guess. So I really love it. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you guys later.